Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn, and I'm going to talk to you this week about five things I learned after I graduated. Uh, hard to believe, but uh, graduation time is here again. I've, I've been getting invited to graduation parties. Uh, a lot of the colleges have already had their graduating classes, and it's just amazing that another time and season of graduation has happened for us and uh, just been kind of making me reflect about when I graduated from high school and college and um, just want to share some things this week that uh, I've learned and I don't know about you you know you may graduate from high school college maybe you've got a master's degree or PhD uh, you've really never graduated you're always learning because life is always changing so I want to share some things with that, but I do want to say uh, maybe you are looking for a, a new career. Uh, if you're looking for a new career or something different, there's going to be a six-week tr uh, training course on Wednesday nights from 7 to 9 p.m., just an introductory training course uh, for a career as a stenographer. And, uh, you know, I've got a couple of friends that do that, and it's just been a great, great career for them. We had Natalie Domenico on a couple months ago back in April just sharing about how much she's enjoyed it. And so if you're looking for that, uh, a new career, maybe just an introductory class to take for two hours for six weeks to find out maybe that's a new career option you might like to pursue. Uh, also, if you're looking for an immediate job, uh, Gluten-Free Miracles is looking for help as a, a baker, uh, counter service help. Um, they, they've got several positions open and uh, they're a locally owned business over on Burt Road uh, behind Jeff's car wash off Nicholasville Road. And so you can go to their website, glutenfreemiracles.com and check them out and uh, acquire about a position or go and just drop in and uh, apply for that. But if you're looking for a new career or a new position, uh, that would be a great opportunity for you. Well, I want to talk to you about five things that I've learned after I graduated. And as I started reflecting about that, and when I graduated from the University of Kentucky in 1989, there was a song that came out by Don Henley called The Heart of the Matter. And Don Henley, of course, one of the founding members of the Eagles, one of the greatest groups of all time, just were recently in concert in Louisville and jealous of several friends that got to go. Uh, no, the Bible says we're not supposed to be envious or jealous, but as I saw some of them post on social media and about how good it was, and now since Glenn Fry, uh, unfortunately, is no longer with us, they've added Vince Gill, uh, just got even a little more envious and uh, just heard it was a great, great concert. But Don Henley also had a so solo career. Career, did really well with that and he had a song that was one of the top songs in 1989 when I graduated from the University of Kentucky called The Heart of the Matter. Uh, you probably know that song but I want to share just a part of it and I'm going to base uh, the program today and tomorrow off some of that and just also show obviously how God speaks through so many different ways and things that we can learn even though we may have graduated many many seasons ago or uh, if you just been fortunate enough to graduate or have a son, a daughter, niece, nephew, grandson, granddaughter, uh, these might be five things that they want to apply uh, in their lives as they start this next season of life. The song, The Heart of the Matter, starts out, I got the call today. I didn't want to hear, but I knew that it would come. An old true friend of ours was talking on the phone. She said, you found someone. And I thought of all the bad luck and all the struggles we went through. And how I lost me and how you lost you. What are those voices outside love's open door? They make us throw our contentment and they beg for something more. I'm learning to live without you now, but I miss you sometimes. The more I know, the less I understand. All the things I thought I knew, I'm learning again. I've been trying to get down to the heart of the matter, but my will gets weak and my thoughts seem to scatter. But I think it's about forgiveness. Forgiveness. Even if, even if you don't love me anymore. Great, great song. Uh, we may attach it uh, uh, to the podcast later on, uh, The Heart of the Matter by Don Henley. But that song was one of the top songs in 1989 when I graduated the University of Kentucky. And I just started reflecting on that, and God, what have you taught me over, it's hard to believe that that's been 33 uh, years ago. My goodness, time flies when you're having fun, right? 
<laughs> but, you know, uh, there was five things that really kind of clearly came to mind. This is not an exhaustive list by any form or fashion, but the first thing uh, that I have learned over these past 30 plus years since I graduated is one phone call or one text or one email can change everything in our lives. You know, there's that opening line in the song there, heart of the matter, I got the call today. I didn't want to hear. And we've all got that phone call or that text um, from somebody that says, hey, um, so-and-so has been in a car accident and it's not looking good. Or that phone call text that, hey, you know, unfortunately, um, your father or your mother has passed away or you hear of a, one of your best friends has uh, tragically died uh, in a situation uh, that was beyond their control and people that just suffer extended periods of because of cancer and it's just so brutal and even though we know mentally and emotionally we have to prepare for it and we know it's coming it's still really really hard at times isn't it to say goodbye to someone that we love and those phone calls and texts that we get we realize that you know life is fragile and that it can change but i'm so thankful that jesus he prepared us he warned us that you know it's things are going to happen unfortunately because we live in a fallen world since adam and eve in the first sin over two thousand years ago in the garden of eden but jesus when he was here in his short 33 time the 33 years here on earth said in this world you will have trouble but take heart i have overcome the world and i want to encourage you today um you know we've talked about unfortunately being on the uh, receiving end of uh, the a painful phone call or text or email, uh, maybe saying your job's being eliminated. You're, you know, this, we've all got those before, right? But I want to encourage you to, you know, let, let's make a positive of a negative and let's start calling and texting. Uh, email's okay, but preferably a phone call, a text, um, a, a card, a handwritten card to those people that we love. And making time, especially for the family members and our friends, and be intentional and on this summer say, you know what, it stays daylight later, we're going to get together. And maybe it's even exercising together. Go for a 30, 45-minute walk, uh, meeting for a cup of coffee, meeting for dinner, um, you know, attending a ball game together. Whatever the case may be, maybe you've got to drive somewhere and want to see if somebody could drive with you, um, you know, a 30, 45-minute drive there and back for maybe some errand you've got to run. And just saying, you know what, I'm going to be intentional because, you know what, if I get a phone call that this person's not going to be with us any longer, has already gone to heaven with Jesus, I want them to know that I love them. And the old saying, actions speak much louder than words. And I just want to encourage you today, if there's somebody that God's put on your mind or on your heart that you really want them to know that you appreciate them, that you love them, that you value them, let them know. Let them know. Phone call's great. Uh, a text, if you're in a hurry and you're afraid you'll forget like I do, go on and immediately do that. Put some great emojis on there with a heart sign and, um, you know, uh, a handwritten note's phenomenal. Nothing like getting something like that, showing our appreciation, our love for somebody. Um, or if it's somebody, you know, it's going through a really, really difficult season of life to be able to reach out to them and let them know that you're thinking about them, praying for them, maybe sticking a gift card for 10 bucks to Chick-fil-A so they can have lunch. Or if they're a coffee drinker, Starbucks, or maybe Speedway, if uh, they can get lots of cups of coffee. Or my sister loves a good unsweet tea from McDonald's, so she uh, doesn't eat a lot of food at McDonald's. Uh, but, man, she loves a large uh, unsweet tea in the morning, no lemon. In fact, sometimes I don't even think she gets ice in it because it lasts longer and she provides her own ice. And I think there's still a dollar to there may be a little bit more. But even like a $10 gift card to McDonald's like that would be something that would really, really bless somebody and encourage you to do that. Because we all know we are going to get a phone call or text or email that can change everything and someone is no longer with us. And you know, I'm not about gloom and doom, but I also am about hope and Wow, you could be a game changer for somebody this week, starting today. And maybe it's your goal, one person each day this week, that you're going to phone call on a drive text or send a good old hand fat, uh, go 
hand, uh, old fashioned, sorry, handwritten note telling, hey, thinking about you, love you, miss you. Let's get together and getting some people that you love on your calendar. A second thing that I've learned since I graduated a long time ago is sometimes you're the bug. Sometimes you're the windshield. <laughs> We've all been there, haven't we? Sometimes you're the bug. Sometimes you're the windshield. Uh, you know, in that song, uh, Heart of the Matter by Don Henley, uh, one of the lines says, And I thought of all the bad luck and the struggles we went through and how I lost me and how you lost you. And friends, we all go through seasons of life like that, don't we? Where we just, uh, my goodness, it just seems like life is swinging us around by the tail and we don't know which way's up or which way's down. Have you ever been there? Maybe that's where you're at today. And I just want to encourage you to know that God is with you and he has not forsaken you and that we do not have to be afraid. I want to remind you in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power and of love and self-discipline. Say that one more time. Somebody listening today needs to know that God has not given you a spirit of fear today and timidity, but he's given you a spirit of power, of love, and self-discipline. And he will help make a way when there seems to be no way. And you know, Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 8, uh, one of my favorite passages in the Bible because we've talked about uh, numerous times over the four and a half years I've been doing Hope is Here about, you know, we just go through different seasons in our life. Winter, spring, summer, and fall. And sometimes it's winter and it's dark and it's cold and it's bleak. And sometimes it's just even ugly and seems like it's dark all the time and overcast. And yet uh, the good thing is we know that spring is going to come again. And we're in such a beautiful time of year here in central Kentucky. And I know people listen to podcasts all over the, uh, all over the world of Hope is Here. But uh, such a beautiful, beautiful place to live in central Kentucky. And uh, But, you know, there's seasons of life, not just seasons of weather. Winter, spring, summer, and fall. And Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8 summarizes that so well. It says, for everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to harvest. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to cry and a time to laugh. A time to grieve and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and and a time to turn away, a time to search, and a time to quit searching, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to mend, a time to be quiet, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. I'm sure as I read those eight verses in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8, uh, that you're like, yeah, Greg, I'm in one of those seasons. Or maybe you heard four or five of those verses that spoke to you and said, that's the season I'm in. So we're out of time, but I want to encourage you to go read Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8, and know that God is with you in every season of your life, the winter time, the springtime, the summertime, and the fall time, and that there's always hope because of Jesus. I'm Greg Horn, and this is Hope is Here.